Hi there. Welcome back to the Math Skills series on Jetpack Data Store. In this episode, we will take a look at Preferences Data Store, one of two data store implementations. We will go over how to create it, read and write data, and how to handle exceptions, all of which should hopefully provide you with enough information to decide if it's the right choice for your app. Preferences Data Store uses key value pairs to store smaller data sets without defining the schema up front. This might remind you of shared preferences, but only in the way it structures your data models. There are a variety of benefits brought by Data Store over its shared preferences predecessor. Feel free to quickly jump back to our previous episode and take a look at a detailed comparison we've made there. Going forward, we will refer to preferences Data Store as just preferences, unless specified otherwise. To quickly recap, Preferences provides a fully asynchronous API for retrieving and saving data using the power of Kotlin coroutines and flow. It allows easy and quick data migrations, but it does not provide full type safety. Now let's dive into some code and learn how preferences should be implemented. We will use the preferences data store code lab code. If you're interested in a more hands-on approach with implementation, we really encourage you to go through working with preferences data store code lab on your own. The sample app displays a list of tasks and the user can choose to filter them by their completed status or sort by priority and deadline. We want to store their selection, a Boolean for displaying completed tasks and a sort order enum in data store. Let's start with adding the necessary dependency. In our modules build gradle file, we need to add the data store preferences dependency using the latest stable release. You interact with data saved in Data Store through an instance of Data Store Preferences. Data Store is an interface that grants access to the persisted information. Preferences is an abstract class similar to a generic map, used specifically in the Preferences implementation of Data Store to keep track of your key value pairs. To create this instance, it is recommended to use the delegate Preferences Data Store and pass a mandatory name parameter. This delegate is a Kotlin extension property whose receiver type must be an instance of context, subsequently needed for constructing the file object where data store stores the data. You shouldn't create more than one instance of data store for a given file, as doing so can break all data store functionality. In this code lab, we construct the instance at the top level of the activity for simplicity and pass it as a singleton. In later posts, we will see how to do this via dependency injection. Data Store provides a quick way of constructing keys for different data types, such as Boolean preference key, impreference key, and many more. You just need to pass the key name as value. These keys will be used to save and retrieve data from Data Store. While this does put some constraints on data types, keep in mind that it doesn't provide definite type safety. By specifying a preference key of a certain type, we hope for the best and rely on our assumptions that a value of a certain type would be returned. If you feel your code is structured in a way to handle this safely, feel free to continue with preferences. If not, consider using preferences sibling Proto Data Store, as it provides full type safety. To read the stored data in user preferences repository, we expose a preferences flow from data store data. This provides efficient access to the latest state state and emits with every change. Using Kotlin data classes, we can observe any emissions and transform the provided data store preferences object into our own user preferences model, using only the key value pairs we're interested in. The flow will always either emit a value or throw an exception when attempting to read from disk. We will look at exception handling in later sections. Data store also ensures that the work is always performed on dispatcher's IO so your UI thread isn't blocked. Do not create any cache repositories to mirror the current state of your preferences data. Doing so would invalidate Data Store's guarantee of data consistency. If you require a single snapshot of your data without subscribing to further flow emissions, prefer using the first flow operator on Data Store data. For writing data, we will use the Data Store Suspend Edit function that takes in another Suspend Transform function. As an example, we will change our show completed flag here. Let's break that down. The edit function is performed on the implementation of the data store preferences interface. The transform function is a suspend block used to apply the specified changes to our persisted data. Mutable preferences is a mutable subclass of preferences, similar to mutable map, that allows us to make changes to our key value pairs. Editing data is done transactionally in an atomic read modify write operation, 
which guarantees consistency and prevents race conditions. Only after the transform and edit coroutines complete successfully, the data will be persisted durably to disk, and data store's data flow will be reflecting the update. Keep in mind that this is the only way of making changes to the data store state. Keeping a mutable preferences reference and mutating it manually after transform completes will not change the persisted data in data store. So you shouldn't attempt to modify mutable preferences outside of the transform block. If the writing operation fails for any reason, the transaction is aborted and an exception is thrown. Okay, so we've covered data store reading and writing. If you've previously used share preferences in your app and would like to safely transfer its data to preferences, you can use share preferences migration. It requires a context, share preferences name, and an optional set of keys you wish to migrate or just leave it as the default migrate all keys value. Looking into the share preferences migration, you will see a get migration function, which is responsible for fetching all required stored key value pairs and then adding them to preferences using the same keys. You can then pass this via the produce migrations parameter of the data store delegate to migrate easily. Produce migrations will ensure that the migrations are run before any potential data access to data store. This means your migration must have succeeded before data store emits any further values and before it begins making any new changes to the data. Once you've successfully migrated, it's safe to stop using share preferences as the keys are migrated only once and then removed from share preferences. The produce migration accepts a list of data migrations. We will see in later episodes how we can use this for other types of data migrations. If you don't need to migrate, you can ignore this parameter as it has a default argument provided already. One of the main advantages of data store over share preferences is its neat mechanism for caching and handling exceptions. While share preferences throws parsing errors as runtime exceptions, leaving room for unexpected, uncaught crashes, data store throws an IO exception when an error occurs with reading or writing data. We can safely handle this by using the catch flow operator right before the map one and emitting some form of backup data, such as empty preferences. Or we can just use a try-catch block for writing data. If a different type of an exception is thrown, prefer re-throwing it. We've covered data store's preferences implementation, when and how to use it for reading and writing data, how to handle errors, and how to migrate from share preferences. In the next episode, we will cover the same topics with proto data store, and a bit more. So hit subscribe and stay tuned.